Um, thank you very much for um, having us in such a very uh, delightful and wonderful meeting. Um, the role of heart failure societies is, uh, is very crucial, actually. Worldwide, um, heart failure has been, let's say, a relatively new specialty, growing. Um, the people involved and specialized in heart failure are not that much, or not that many, but they um, have come along to, to increase the awareness, improve the knowledge about heart failure, managing heart failure. And uh, luckily enough, in the region right now, we have uh, a number of um, growing heart failure societies. Um, I can mention the Saudi Heart Failure Working Group under the Saudi Heart Association, and the Emirates um, uh, Heart Failure Working Group, and others. Um, so, for example, we have our annual meetings, um, uh, our outreach programs, visits to the to the remote areas and, and uh, workshops. I hope and, and I, I do see a big impact of these societies on improving the awareness and knowledge and identifying uh, heart failure patients uh, as early and as soon as possible, um, referring them in the right time, um, optimizing their therapies um, uh, very well and connecting to uh, the, the, the healthcare providers in the kingdom or in the region and outside uh, to best benefit patients. Very interestingly, the role of biomarkers in heart failure patients. And um, as mentioned, uh, heart failure goes through uh, several stages. Um, the easiest way of dividing it is the ACC AHA staging, the stage A, B, C, and D. The A people are those who are at risk, like those who have diabetes, hypertension, um, uh, obesity, metabolic syndrome. Stage B are those who develop um, an insult to the heart, whether they have hypertrophy, have an MI. Um, and stage C are the classic heart failure patients with overt heart failure signs and symptoms. Um, stage D are the advanced. Now, um, it's probably well understood and, and uh, recognized the role in uh, stage C, those who have heart failure classically in diagnosis and prognosis of those patients uh, of heart failure. But um, what is more interesting is the use of these biomarkers in the very early stages like A and B in detecting, predicting, and preventing the, uh, the uh, incidence or the development of heart failure. There's lots of evidence, especially with um, diabetes, which is a very big uh, issue in our region. Um, diabetes is, is quite endemic and in most of our cardiovascular diseases, uh, disease patients are diabetic. It has been shown that diabetic patients have um, a very strong uh, uh, chance of predicting their progression to heart failure or to other cardiovascular diseases and um, the biomarkers specifically anti-proBMP but even the um, uh, troponins and GDF15 have shown um, a strong predicting value in detecting patients with diabetes who will progress uh, to heart failure and other cardiovascular diseases. Um, now, how to act on it is the question. Uh, it's still a work in progress. Uh, we are still learning how to act on, act on it. But nevertheless, knowing such patients with high risk or high chance of developing heart failure we might be able to uh, follow them more closely, might be able to start um, therapies um, earlier on, um, be more aggressive in reaching our target uh, goals in, in blood pressure and blood sugar management, and even aggressive up titration of medications, which has been shown in several studies, including the STOP HF and um, now the Pontiac uh, study being carried on. So, um, there, is, there is a strong role of the use of uh, biomarkers in, in, in such uh, patients um, in heart failure and the guidelines stresses it very well in the role of prevention, diagnosis and prognosis in, um, in time of admission, um, during hospitalization or pre-discharge. Um, the biomarkers I I has been used in the whole continuum of heart failure. And I think with time, we're going to learn more and more about the role and the action uh, towards them. A lot. 
eye care can impact the practice a lot, and I've been discussing it a lot, and then I do thank Rosh for such an initiative. Now, um, one of the things I keep on saying, the, there's a big gap in communication between the clinician and the lab. Um, and, and I think it impacts the practice dramatically. As a clinician, I would like, and it's very important to know what is being used in the lab, what kit is being used, what reference levels, what actual uh, biomarker is being used, and if any changes happen to be updated, because uh, based on that result, I make a lot of, of, of uh, assumptions and, uh, and, and movements. Um, and a question has been raised today and several times, why is there a low use of biomarkers in our region? Um, and, and the answer is, is simple from, from many aspects. One is the lack of knowledge and awareness about these biomarkers and what their role are and what to do with them. And I think such forums will actually educate people more about these biomarkers, how to uh, act on them, how to approach them, what's their benefit, what's their role, what's the evidence behind it, and, um, and, and make it more... Um, more uh, uh, understood for the clinician uh, to, to understand. And as you said, um, the, the collaboration between the lab and the clinician will strengthen the use of these, um, uh, these biomarkers and their, uh, their influence and impact on, on practice. It also opens the, the, the door to uh, new ideas and new research, and, uh, and it helps us think of how can we actually improve uh, and progress and in, in, in answer the questions that raise all the time? Uh, what might be obvious for some might not be obvious for someone else. Um, and and it's, a, it's an interesting forum. Uh, I hope it continues and, and everyone improves.